Welcome. This session is to show how our business customers can collaborate better and be more productive using Creative Cloud Libraries. Whether you are an existing or prospective Creative Cloud customer in a small, mid-size, or enterprise organization, you can greatly benefit from CC Libraries. Today, I'll show you how. Creative Cloud Libraries work across Creative Cloud, across both your desktop and your mobile devices. So that means that things that you put inside of a Creative Cloud library are not only accessible across the, um, the application that you put it in, but also across the other desktop applications and even most of the mobile apps. More importantly, even if you put something inside of a CC library, it's accessible even if you're offline because the content is still stored locally on your hard drive as well as synced to Creative Cloud. Now you might be asking, well, what's a CC library? I've heard of libraries before inside of other applications. Uh, for example, InDesign. Adobe InDesign uh, has had libraries pretty much since day one. But those libraries were designed to store assets for InDesign in InDesign. In other words, whatever you put inside of an InDesign library or an Adobe Muse library back when it first came out were only accessible to those applications. So that meant having to have a separate library for one application versus another library for another application. Now with CC libraries, I can not only have as many libraries as I want and share them across my entire workflow, but I can even use them to collaborate with colleagues, clients, and management. So this way, whether I'm working as an individual sole designer in my own little world, or I'm working in a small business or even an enterprise level company, I can uh, use CC libraries to enhance my workflow and quickly get assets across the team. So let's take a look at how the whole process works. I'm gonna start off in Adobe InDesign CC and uh, show you how to create a library from scratch in case you don't have one or have never done it. And then we'll jump to a library that's already got some things in it. All right, so here I am in InDesign. And to get to the libraries panel, I mean, I can see it right here on my, um, on my panels, but if you don't have it accessible right away, you can always go up to the window menu in whichever application you're in and just bring up CC libraries. Once you bring up CC libraries, of course, it will go to the last library you were working on in that application. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using a, a library throughout this video called Altura. And this particular Altura library, you can note by the little double-headed icon, has already been shared. That means I'm collaborating with others on this library. Now, uh, if you didn't have a library, you'd be prompted to create one. And you can always create a library from the side menu on the panel. So I can say create new library. For example, we can call this the CC SMB uh, library, or just SMB for short. And when I create that library, of course, that library will be blank and now it's waiting for me to drag and drop assets in it. So for example, if I were to uh, grab my selection tool and click on this uh, stock image here and just drag it over, now that image uh, gets added to the library and starts syncing it up to Creative Cloud. Now again, it's available local, so even if I don't have a connection, um, it will still be available to me locally. But when I do have a connection, it will sync it, therefore making it available um, across Creative Cloud to anyone else I'm sharing this library with, as well as my other computer that I'm signed in with at home uh, in the same CC account. So for example, uh, I do work at home sometimes on, on my MacBook Air, and having CC installed there means I also have access to this library and anything I put in it. Now you might be asking, well, what can you put inside of a library? Obviously you can put graphics in, but you can also put other things in as well. So for example, if I highlight this text and I click the plus sign, it's going to ask me to choose which ones of those things do I want. Do I want the character style? Do I want the paragraph style? And do I want the text color? And if I add all three of those things, then it will give me all three of those things. Now I didn't put the actual word in, no worries, because I didn't add it as a, as a graphic. I, I selected the text. But now if I uh, select it as a frame, then I can of course add that graphic in, and I've already got the character and paragraph style, and then that gets added in as well. So anytime I need that color, anytime I need that character or paragraph style or the actual text, all I have to do is just simply drag it into a document and it places it as if um, I had just created it from scratch. So as you can see, it's 
very useful to be able to work inside of libraries and contain use them for style guides and across your workflow. Now at any time, if you wanted to share a library, all you'd have to do is just go up to the menu and just, you have two choices. You can either collaborate. Now collaborate means that I am working with the person or people I'm about to share this with. That means that we'll have equal access to the content in this library. We can all put things in the library. We can all pull things from the library. We can all change things in the library and we can all remove things from the library. So in other words, only collaborate with people that you really uh, trust or are really a part of the project because they can make changes that will, you know, literally affect everything inside the library. Or if you want a less intrusive uh, means of collaborating, you can just simply share a link. If I share a link to the library, that's like giving someone a copy of everything in the library and they'll be able to pull from it. They'll be able to uh, use that library on their desktop, um, but they won't, any changes they make to it will not affect me. So in other words, here's your copy of everything I've done and have at it, do whatever you want, but whatever you do has no bearing on my copy of my library. So you have two ways of doing that. And of course, either collaborating or sharing a link. All right, so now that we've um, kind of gone through quickly what libraries are, how to create one, how to add things to them, what kinds of things can be added to them, and the list of things that can be added also are, uh, in some cases, unique to specific applications. For example, in Photoshop, I could add uh, styles, um, uh, like layer styles to a uh, library, or I could add, I could actually convert an entire Photoshop document into a new library. And so it, it will depend on the application and its capabilities. Um, sometimes you'll get unique things that can only be done in that application, but work across libraries um, in general. Now, whenever you're in a library and something is grayed out, that just means that you're in an application that that particular kind of item can't be used. Uh, so for example, if you um, uh, were doing something in Photoshop with a, a style that only works in Photoshop, like a, an effect, uh, so to speak, uh, well, that effect might not work inside of, say, Adobe Muse. So in that case, uh, that effect would be grayed out while you were in Muse because you couldn't apply it. But that's about it as far as uh, limitations. Now, let's go ahead and jump back to our main library. I'm going to switch back to Altura. And in the Altura library, there we go. In the Altura library, um, I'm I, I can show off some more things. I've got some color themes. Uh, I've got more character styles, I've got actual graphics, and I've got some layer styles. And this is what I meant by these are grayed out because these are Photoshop layer styles. So I'm in InDesign, they don't necessarily apply here. But what I wanna show is kind of that cross application workflow as well. So we're gonna do a couple of things. Let's go ahead and bring in our main, um, our, our main header image. I've got a frame here uh, waiting for it already. And here's the image that I want to bring in. It's the Altura. Let me just make sure that's the right one. No, it's not the right one. This is the right one. I'm going to go ahead and bring this image in because it's already got the uh, color swoosh on it. And when I drag that in, of course, it brings it in just like any other InDesign image. Uh, so whether I placed it from the desktop or drag it in from a library, I'm always going to get the, the place gun in InDesign. And when I click, of course, it will place it into the frame that I designated for it to go in. I can use the grabber hand to move it around inside the frame. I want to move it up a little bit more so we can actually see the uh, company logo, which is part of that. Now, um, I can see a couple of problems with this implementation of the item inside the library. Number one, uh, the little color swoosh here that we can see uh, below as well um, is too high on the image. It's, it's too far up. We need to pull it down. Also, just looking at this stock image, uh, we can see that the, um, well, first of all, it's still a stock image. We haven't uh, licensed it yet. But more importantly, I can see that the building looks a little skewed. It's like it's leaning, especially like here, it looks like it's really leaning over to the right. And um, while that's, you know, the way perspective works sometimes in photography, it just doesn't look good here. So we need to fix those things. And what I'm gonna do is just simply double click on that library item. It says that it was created inside Photoshop. And when I double click on it, it of course will take me over to Photoshop and launch that item so I can go ahead and make whatever changes I wanna to make to it. 
Okay, so now that the item has opened up in Photoshop, I can see it's uh, it's the beginning of the work we were doing. It's got all the layers, layer sets, and that's the beauty of libraries is that it contains everything that was a part of this document. So in this case, um, we wanna go to the actual uh, photograph, which is right here. We can see that layer. And now that I got the photograph in place, what I'd love to do is simply apply a camera raw effect on that. So we'll go to our filter menu. We'll go down to camera raw filter. And um, since I've already converted the layer for as a smart object, it will be non-destructive. And we'll go ahead and go to our perspective options. And we'll just simply perform an upright command. Uh, that will go ahead and in this case, it straightened the buildings out. Kind of had to warp it down the opposite way. So we're just going to go ahead and scale that up a little bit to kind of crop it to where we need it to be. And now we got have our buildings perfectly standing straight up and down. So now I'll go ahead and click OK. That will, of course, render it um, onto, the, um, onto the canvas. And then we'll go to our um, rainbow of colors. That's what, I, that's what it's technically called. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down a bit into the frame. Now, again, it's OK that it's cut off at the top there because we're not going to see the top of that inside of InDesign anyway. Um, and now I'll go ahead and just simply save it. Now, when I save it, it will update the library. I'm going to go ahead and close it inside of Photoshop. We'll pop back over to InDesign. And in InDesign, it's all updated. It's got the color um, rainbow down, pull down. It's got the building straight up and down. The library has been updated. So everywhere I've used that item uh, has now been updated. And I'm all set, except there's one more thing. There's one more item that needs to go here. And it really, um, we want to use a strand of DNA for this medical company. And I want to pull in a new strand of DNA. These are both stock images from Adobe Stock, and that's great. Uh, same thing with the rainbow of uh, acrylic colors. Um, but I want to I get something fresh. So the other nice thing about libraries is that you can do a search for Adobe Stock right inside the library. Um, not only can you search for Adobe Stock as a, as a bonus tip here, you notice a little pull down to the right of the search box also allows me to search the current library or across all of my libraries. And this is a really powerful feature um, because you may be using you know, several dozen libraries and you just can't remember where a particular item is, which library it's in. So you could do a search no matter which library you're in and search across all libraries. But by default, it will search Adobe Stock. And I'm just gonna go ahead and type in DNA. And um, I've taken the liberty of, of selecting vectors, meaning I want a uh, resolution independent, high quality vector image from Adobe Stock. Uh, and you can of course search for photos and illustrations, videos and templates, but in this case, I want vectors. So this will allow me to scroll through and see the various uh, choices that I have. By the way, the one with the blue check mark is one that I've already licensed, which is kind of nice. So I don't make the mistake of trying to license something I already have. Um, and I can just scroll through and see all the various uh, DNA choices here. And this one's kind of cool. I kind of like that one. Um, and of course, if you like something, but you're not sure if you want to use it, you have a choice. You can save it as a preview and it will just save that as a preview to the Altura library. But if you're ready, you can just go ahead and license it at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, there was one that I saw. Well, maybe I like this one. I don't know. Yeah, let's go ahead and pick this one. I'm going to go ahead and save this as a preview. Now I can do this a couple of different ways. I can just click preview or drag, literally drag and drop it right from the panel um, into whichever frame that I want. And that will go ahead and bring that preview down. Now, because this is a stock preview of a vector image, it's going to be just a JPEG. It's not going to be the actual vectors. Um, and of course, I can go ahead and scale that down, make that fit the way I want it to. And um, at any given time, if, if I show that to the client, my um, art director, my management team, whoever I need to share this with, if they like it, what's nice inside of InDesign is I have the ability to license it right, well, actually most of the apps have the ability to license it right on the canvas. So even if I had this library closed and I wasn't uh, remembering where I got this from, I could still just license it right here and it will um, allow me to um, purchase 
a royalty-free license of this uh, stock image and therefore use it over and over and over again as much as I want. So let's go ahead and click OK. And what that will also do, we can go ahead and get rid of the search. Um, it will um, download the high-res version of it. And now that high-res version is inside of the library, or, or, uh, available for me to use as many times as I want throughout my design campaign. Now, um, let's say I wanted to make a change to it. Well, obviously, this one was done inside of Illustrator. So if I double click on it, it, well, I shouldn't say it was done inside of Illustrator. It's a vector image, so therefore it's going to open inside of Illustrator. And once that's opened up, I have um, free reign to do whatever I want to do with it. So for example, if I do want to change my original stock image, I can, or I can add a copy of this to the same library uh, so that way I'm not, I'm not disturbing or changing or modifying my original stock image. It's totally up to me. Um, but one of the things that's kind of cool about this is if we go up, we notice that we had some color themes before, and maybe you have a color theme for the design project you're working on. Uh, well, you have the ability to use that color theme um, and use the colors from that theme throughout your project as well. So if I make the changes to this particular vector, um, I can, of course, use that one uh, with the new color, or I can, let's undo that a couple times. Let's put it back to the way it was. And let's go ahead and select this and add it to our library once again. And we'll add, we don't need the fill color, we just need the graphic in this case. I added the field color by accident anyway, but we got the graphic in. So that way I've got a new one that is my copy to work on in each, any way that I want. So let's close the, the stock one. Let's not save it. And now let's open up, um, let's go actually go back to the library here. Let's go ahead and open up my copy. So this way, when I open up my copy, I can do whatever I want and not be touching or messing with the original um, that I got from Adobe Stock. So now I can go ahead and make that change in the color without worrying about, oh no, I'm, I'm really altering uh, the stock image and therefore, you know, I'm, I'm gonna lose that original color and maybe I do want that original color somewhere. All right, so now that I've got that done, we'll go ahead and just simply close it and it'll ask us to save. And once we save it, it will um, update inside of uh, the library. And of course, we didn't use that one in the library. We used the original stock one, but we can go ahead and just simply uh, drag this one in. And we'll go ahead and just click and replace it. And now we've got our copy in with vectors, resolution independent. We can make it whatever size we want. We can put it anywhere we want and we can use it over and over and over again. And all of the people that are... Um, are collaborating with me also now have a copy of the new DNA with the new color. So libraries are a fantastic way to work across multiple applications and use the same content no matter what workflow you're working on. So even if you're in a video workflow or a graphic design workflow or a photography workflow, you've got access to the same things. I can't imagine my creative process without libraries. Uh, I've, I've grown to love them and use them pretty much on a daily basis. And especially having Adobe Stock tied in uh, neatly, I can just, anytime I don't have the perfect image or the perfect design or the perfect video or the perfect template or the perfect vector, I can do a quick search for Adobe Stock and just quickly get to work um, or continue working, I should say, uh, right where I am. I don't have to go out. I don't have to uh, leave my workflow. I can just bring things in and keep right on going. Whether you're an individual working for a small team or small company or a large enterprise, Adobe Creative Cloud has something for you and Adobe Creative Cloud libraries are going to definitely help you in your workflow. Cheers, everyone. Take care and thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.